I've been using the Aventon commuter e-bike for six months now, and I don't think I'm ever going to buy a traditional bike ever again. Here's why. So we're a year into the COVID-19 pandemic, and while everyone's life has changed in different ways, one of the first things that impacted me was an almost immediately noticeable change in how inactive I was becoming. My body you know, was used to walking many miles a day, commuting back and forth to New York City every day, playing hockey twice a week. And with all that gone, I was super lucky to have Aventon reach out and offer me a chance to check out their commuter e-bike. But I'll be honest, I did not know much about e-bikes then, and the only person I knew who had any experience using one was my colleague, Logan Moy. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna call you the e-bike resident expert here. You you definitely know a lot more about them than I do. Aventon sent Logan the same bike as me, so it was great having him side by side as I learned about e-bikes in general. And he really helped me get a lay of the land. So I bought my first e-bike about a year ago, and when I bought it, it was kind of considered an affordable entry-level e-bike. After getting to ride the Aventon commuter bike, which is a few hundred dollars more expensive than the e-bike that I own. I really got a sense that there were big improvements in certain areas. The commuter bike is a class three electric bike that has a 750 watt peak motor, a top speed of 28 miles per hour and roughly 40 miles per charge. And in my testing is right on the money after multiple charges, which when you're riding a bike is a lot more range than you might think. The version of the commuter bike I received has switchable gears as well as pedal assist and a throttle on demand, meaning once you're sitting on the bike, you can push down on the throttle on the handlebars and this thing is off. Okay. And the first time I hit that throttle, let me tell you, I could not wipe the smile off my face. It was amazing. Pedal assist is a different story where you can set the sensitivity of how much help you'll get while pedaling through the uh, energy in the battery. Now it lets you start at zero with no assist and you can bring that all the way up to five, five being the most pedal assist the bike offers. So with no pedal assist, this bike is heavy. Okay, like way heavier than any bike I'd ever ridden. But that's also because this thing has a giant battery mounted in the center of its frame. So look, if you want a real workout, ride this bike without using any power, believe me. So the real story with the combination of pedal assist and the eight speed drivetrain means you'll likely need to find the sweet spot for the type of feel you want for your ride. Of course, that's gonna change with the type of road you're on. But once you find a good baseline combination, it's pretty easy to make small adjustments. I spoke to Logan about what it was like putting this bike together because I had no experience with doing that. This was the only one I'd ever built, but he seemed to think it was fairly easy. Once you're up and running, the first thing you'll notice is the LCD display mounted on the handlebars. It shows your speed, pedal assist level, battery life, and odometer. It's big, super easy to read in the sun, and it doesn't get in the way of your ride at all. As far as quality of life features are concerned, beyond the LCD display, the commuter offers a 50 pound rear weight capacity and a suspension fork that does a decent job smoothing out the ride. I do wish it did come with some kind of headlight with this package, but standard reflectors are included and you can buy a third party light if you'd like. So I think that $1,600 price range is a pretty good price for an entry level e-bike. I think the one that I bought last year coming in at around $1,200 was considered like more of a budget pick, but I still like both bikes quite a bit. I would recommend if you're buying an e-bike today to, to spend a little bit extra and get that you know, $1,500, $1,600 price range because you get a lot of more advantages at that price level than you do with more budget-friendly bikes. Some of those advantages you get from spending a little bit more are things like uh, suspension forks, uh, suspension seat post, just little things like that that you don't necessarily know you're gonna need until you actually get on a bike and ride it for a long amount of time and you start feeling those pains in your back and your wrists. The Venton commuter bike has a lot of those um, features in place to kind of help make it a more comfortable experience. In terms of it being just a, a good overall e-bike with not a whole lot of extra bells and whistles for the price, it's a really good value. 
I really enjoy riding this commuter e-bike. It's totally renewed my interest in bikes in general and has become one of the highlights of my work from home lifestyle. Now, granted, this is the only e-bike I ever tried, right? So I'm sure there's a lot more to discover in this category, but overall the Aventon seemed to fit my lifestyle as well as Logan's. It's a big bike, so you can't really get away with keeping one in an apartment hallway, so it's possible it might not be the right fit for your specific needs. Be sure to keep it here on the channel. We've got tons more e-bike content coming down the line. Also, head over to CNET's Roadshow channel because their e-bike coverage is fantastic. Until next time, thanks for watching.